morning or evening, depending on your location. Hey, how are you? Doing good. Happy right. snowy Tuesday. James, that a uh, background picture of you? Was that hiking somewhere in like the Rockies? In um, Glacier National Park. Okay. I was wondering. It looked somewhat familiar. I live right on the Rockies, so I... Yes. <laughs> the Wasatch Mountains, technically, but... Taylor, is that background picture you hiking somewhere in the Southwest? Yeah. I met this guy named Java. I think we'll give people a second to come in. Um, <laughs> notes wise, uh, James, do you already have a place for him? If not, I can create a Google Doc just in my personal Google account and then use that and share it out to everybody for taking yeah. notes and whatnot. Yeah, I haven't had a chance. Um, okay, I'll, I'll create that. Give me just a second. I've been down for the count for the last few days, six. So. <laughs> I'll give it one more minute here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just scaffolding out the notes and I'll send out the link shortly. I'll also share that document, um, which can be a starting point for talking. So um, I guess we can probably kick it off. I think Taylor's going to send over yep. uh, some notes. There's the notes. There you go. Just got them. Cool. Um, so thanks for everybody coming to the, the WASI OCI Artifacts um, meeting here. Um, the I guess one, one thing I thought we'd do is maybe, I, I know most of the faces, but I don't know them all. So I thought maybe we'd just go around and do like a quick brief intro where you're from, what you're what you're interested, why you're interested in the OCI stuff, and then um and then we can kind of dive into it a little bit deeper. Um it was kind of a just brief introduction. So I, I guess I can go first. I'm I'm James Servant. I work at Microsoft and I work at Runwazi and we're interested in the OCI um and WASI because we want to make it so that you can run these things anywhere and have um and you know consistent platform for for users across the wazi space so okay. 
I'll pat, I'll take it. I'll just take it unless you're going to pass off to someone. So, um, I'm Taylor. I am, uh, I work at Cosmonic. I'm mainly interested in this space because unfortunately I have been touching this space for a very long time. So, <laughs> um, I help maintain the Rust OCI distribution crate. And then also I am a Wasm Cloud maintainer. And we're also interested in looking at this from having a way that because components are, are going to be around and going to be these things that we're all using no matter what our platform is, um, having a nice way to to share and, and spread those in a, in a way that's familiar to many customers. Um, and so that's kind of the customers and users. So that's the interest from our, from our side of things. Um, I'll pass off to, uh, let's pass off to Calvin. Hi, I'm Calvin. Uh, I've been working with uh, Danny and Lan on uh, the Bicode Alliance registry subgroup. Um, and Danny and I have been uh, working on a, uh, a registry service for WebAssembly components. Uh, so we're, we're interested in this space to figuring out um, uh, OCI's usage uh, for components. And I will pass it to Liam. I apologize if I had my uh, mic unmuted here. I have uh, three kids home on a snow day, uh, so it's a little loud in my background. Uh, I'm Liam Randall. I'm also a Cosmonic, and uh, I'm also super interested in how we figure out a way to get everybody to work better together. Uh, I'll go. My name is Lion Popcorn uh, Land. Uh, my name is Lan Martin. I uh, work at Fermion. I've been working on the Bicode Alliance registry group for a while. Uh, and my interest is mostly making sure that we don't have three standards for storing artifacts. Uh, go ahead, Danny. Yep. So I'm Danny. Uh, as Calvin mentioned, um, we've been working on registry stuff, uh, and we've also been involved in the Bytecode Alliance registry SIG. And um, yeah, so we're very interested in uh, anything that is being decided around uh, content storage. So yep. And I'll uh, pass it along to Brandon. Uh, Brandon Mitchell here, maintainer from the OCI on both image and distribution specs, pretty involved in how we we're doing the refers API and a bunch of other artifact work over there. And um, so just here to give a little representation from that side, make sure we're all covered. And I will pass it to, I don't believe Victor's gone yet. Yeah, this is uh, Victor, I'm uh, independent. Um, interesting, and anything interesting, I guess, was being one of the most interesting things that's happening. Uh, mostly I'm um, interested in uh, AI security and edge computing. Uh, so from here, I see who's next. I guess uh, Joshua is next. Yeah, I think you're the last one. I will, okay. Joe, are you there? Joe, Joe, yeah, there he is. Hey, sorry, my internet was a bit slow this morning, but hey everyone, I'm Joe, I'm a software engineer at Microsoft, and I uh, also contribute to the uh, some of the Bicode Alliance project, like the Quick Bungeon um, and YC Cloud Core. Awesome. Um, so I guess I can share my screen and we can just go over the premise of why we're all here. Uh, and then maybe start to either agree or disagree on a few of the key points um, and goals for, for the meeting. Um, share. I think it's, nope, it's the wrong one. Okay, can everybody see that? Awesome. Um, so uh, I think I, I put this up wording, you know, feel free to suggest different wording, but essentially we're looking for a, a agreed upon structure for a WASI or a WASM artifact uh, that can be used across various projects. Um, and we believe that this will 
enable consistency for users against tooling and various registries. Um, it would have a specific WASI config media type and artifact type for the OCI spec. That would be a representation of potentially WASI configuration. There's maybe some conversations about minimizing that as much as possible. Uh, that could be broadly used across WASI runtimes and container runtimes. Um, I think that's a quick summary of what, what we're trying to achieve here. Does anybody have any thoughts or want to add anything? I guess my only question here is <clears throat> whether we are scoped down to just WASI artifacts, and then if so, what exactly we mean by that. Um, there are multiple kinds of WASI artifacts, potentially. I mean, sure. my answer here too for this, James, if you don't mind me jumping mm -hmm. in. Um, uh, when James and I were first talking about this, the, the goal here is that we want to be able to support bare WASM modules, which we consider will be still be around, possibly a little bit less common to store in an OCI registry. And then also, um, also components. Components being the big thing, because that's like the, the main part. That's what WASI is components. It's with interfaces and components at this point. And so um, <clears throat> most people are going to need a place to pull these artifacts from and then, then use them. So I think that's the, that was the main idea was like, I, like I think those are the two big ones. There could be other like sub things, but like I, I I would imagine that like the main focus is that we can get like components and wasm like bare wasm modules in here and have those represented. Um, and then um, if we if there's other like real like niche use cases, we should we should probably cover those. But I want to I like I think those those two right there are the big ones that we were considering when we first kind of brainstormed some of the ideas that triggered all this. So just to clarify the terminology, WASI is a particular use of WASM components, but that is not the, we're not scoping down to components that use WASI. Yeah, it's com components and WASM modules like that. If we're going to go, if we're going to like really zoom out, that's what it is. I, kn I know that WASI is one subset of them, but everyone knows, we've been calling it WASI because everyone knows we're referring to WebAssembly for server side compute um when we're when we're doing that. Um I think and so in terms of this, like I think when we write this up, we probably avoid using the word WASI so we don't confuse people. But I think what we meant here was just we're looking at the cloud use case. We're not necessarily looking at like browser use case for for storing things for the browser in an OCI registry. So if someone wants to do that, please let us know and why. But um that's the that was the kind of thinking I I had around this. So if you, you could store components that do not implement, or sorry, do not um, uh, require WASI interfaces, correct? They could just be. Yeah. Brandon? For, for my own clarification, we've got um, a bunch of runtimes listed there, like container D and um, let's see, Podman, run C, different things like that. Well, not run C. Is this strictly focused on container runtimes though or are we also including just general wasi wasm runtimes that are outside of a container environment yeah uh both so we want to yeah. we want to be able to support things like spin and wasi cloud um that run outside of uh runtime but we also want to be able to run those via runtimes for folks that want to do that kind of thing got it yeah those those two i wasn't as familiar with so appreciate that um, so Taylor, you mentioned like running things outside of, uh, server side applications. And I think we did have a use case come up where folks were doing, um, they had a WASM module running in, um, that was associated with Istio and, and it was doing filters and things for Istio. Uh, and they wanted to be able to store that in the OCI registry and then pull that into Istio in some capacity. So um, I, I think, I don't know if that still technically falls under the server side, um, but that was a different type of use case than I think we, we initially were talking here. I think I've always, I could rephrase it another way as not browser. Um, <laughs> but like, like I said, if someone is using it that way, I'd love to know, but like, yeah, I, 
I think that falls definitely in there. Like I would imagine people like Istio, Envoy, those kind of things would probably want to store WebAssembly modules this way as well. But I'm pretty sure those are mostly bare WASM modules right now, though they could be components in the future. So I think that falls into the, the category. Um, is there anything else we want to cover in that with what is it? Plasma artifacts? I think, and I, I had a comment on this, but I think the other question I have is whether we are only targeting sort of runnable artifacts, so a more of a deployment uh, registry use case, or if we're also targeting development artifacts that aren't runnable individually, but can be composed into runnable applications. So Taylor, you can jump in here too, but no, I think we want to be able to have it in a situation where you can take multiple components that are expanded and then at runtime, propose them all back together. Um, that way you can get some of the benefits of being able to um, deduplicate some of some of those components. And there's there's that use case where you're splitting it up within a single OCI reference or artifact, I guess. But I'm wondering if there is an artifact that is on its own, the entire artifact is not runnable, but is only a uh, input into some other tool chain that would eventually produce something more runnable. That, that is a use case that Bytecode Alliance needs to target. I'm just trying to make sure that we know whether we have that particular overlap with this proposal. Um. Calvin? Uh, sorry. Um, just a quick question uh, where you guys were saying we want to exclude the browser use case. Uh, is the thinking because OCI, the way the API works, that it, you know, you can't directly, ref, you know, how you do pull and it's not like a direct URL all the time? Or is there another reason that this isn't a browser? The main thinking is around cloud. It was is my answer. I, I'm I'm trying to keep us from trying to boil the ocean here. When I was thinking about this, or like that's why James put together this doc that I really love because it's like it's simple, straightforward. This is what we're trying to to accomplish. And I think as we go along, if we see a good use case, I don't want to go do it purely for academic or completionist sake. I want to make sure that we we come at it with a okay. Well, we know we need something for like these these artifacts, these components, how do we do that? And then if it's like, oh, well, actually, like someone comes in and is like, we're doing this big thing inside of the inside of our browser engines, then great. But like, I don't want to have to cover that now. I don't I don't think I think that leads us down discussions that would be a less good use of time right now. Not that they, they couldn't be in the future. OK, so it's, it's more of a focus rather than eliminating uh, the possibility. Um, not knowing all the details of what goes on in the browser, no, just enough to be dangerous. I would say that trying to implement the OCI distribution spec and where you pull the manifest back, RC and pulling back the components is probably not a workflow that they want to invest in browsers right now. Yeah, yeah, I, I meant the actual artifacts themselves, the uh, them being able to be run in the browser as opposed to the API, uh, OCI's API of being able to fetch. Yeah. Even if you went straight to the blob, you might hit authentication issues and other stuff like that. So there's yeah. there's complication we're adding on by putting in an OCI registry that I don't know the browsers want to deal with. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Um, and yeah, going back to that question, Lan, Lan has a good question there. Do we support non-runnable artifacts? Um, I actually think that's a good one to answer right now. Um, I am, by the way, I am taking notes over in the notes so you don't have to worry about it, James. Um, 
And so uh, my, I, I think my initial opinion, I, I could, this would be easily changed. I think we'd want to, but if that would not be amenable to the, like the idea of the, um, of the OCI like specification or, or getting this in, I would also be okay not doing it. But I think like supporting like bare like artifacts as well would be important because theoretically, um, theoretically it could be rentable on its own, right? Like you, you could technically rent any WebAssembly module that you get. Um, and this was one of the difficulties when we were first talking about this and when we were having the discussion around artifact type originally inside of OCI is like a component can be a library or an executable theoretically at the same time. It's not always ideally that way, but like it, it can be that way. And so I would say that we would support that if we can. Um, and mostly because we want to be able to, to support these blown up versions. And I think it's, I think it's a step-by-step -step process. I think first, if this is, this is down the Taylor's personal preference. I would love if we can at least get something that says like, here's like a single layer type where this is like, this is a composed component and I'm going to use that, but it has a distinct type and uh, distinct media type and way that we're able to execute it and whatever metadata we need around it. And then step two would be adding the exploded view. And that lets us have more efficient use of the layering system um, that's already present inside of OCI where each component can then be deduped essentially across the whole um, the whole registry of whatever's been pushed inside of there. So my thinking is yes, we support non-runnable artifacts, um, but I am not, like married to that idea in any way. It's just kind of my initial opinion. And I guess referencing your point about the scope of OCI sort of more generally, clearly OCI layers today or OCI uh, images today, many of them are effectively development artifacts. Like you do not run base images on their own very frequently, uh, but it, it is different in that they are exactly the same kind of thing as an image that you do run, whereas in this case, you would have different imports. So yeah, it seems a little fuzzy to me. Um, that actually leans me heav heavier into that opinion of we should, because you're right, like base images, we run those when we do them like as like debugging at most, but most of the time they're never used as a like actual deployment artifact. So I think that kind of does set a decent precedent that you might have a couple things you build from and then layer things on top of. And then just responding to sort of the point of having multiple different artifact types. I think that that's, I think that that's sort of the main point I'm trying to get at here is whether we have one artifact type and we try to parameterize that with, you know, metadata about how you might use that one artifact type, uh, whether we have multiple artifact types or whether we have one artifact type, multiple layer types, or whether it's all part of the configuration blob or uh, the configuration uh, thing. What do we call that thing? The configuration. Um, media type dot configuration. Yeah, right. Not media type. Something along those lines. Um, it's it's all it's all fuzzy to me, and maybe this is something where Brandon could give us a little bit of uh, guidance in where things are moving. I know that consensus is maybe the wrong word, but uh, the vision of consensus on the horizon maybe is a better way of putting it. Yeah, this is, this is gonna be interesting because a lot of what OCI has done in the past has been, we have container images and everything else. And what you're playing with here is very much a gray area in between the two, because you've got something that is a runnable image that a runtime can pick up like uh, ContainerD or some of these other tools out there, Podman. Or you might have a tool like Spin that's pulling the content directly and is not a container runtime necessarily. And so we're we're in this gray area between the two. And so a lot of the advice that we give is saying, here's how you push an artifact or here's how you push a container image. You're going to be between both. And I'm not going to throw up any red flags and say you can't go one direction or another because... This isn't going to be an example for everybody else that's looking for how they want to do their stuff. You're, you're going to have your own little unique scenario here. What I would suggest is to be careful about doing too many features and to keep things simple at first and only start turning stuff on when you realize that you really need it. And the reason for that is because even today we're coming across registries that are blocking certain behavior, certain things. 
and it just takes time for some of these new capabilities to be rolled out. And so if you want better compatibility long-term, start simple, keep it very basic. And that I would say is just a config with your own unique config JSON in there and your layers with whatever the layer media type that makes the most sense for you. And beyond that, it's an open field for you. And so I don't, I don't have any hard direction one way or another from there. Yeah, that, that's good to know, Brandon, because I know in the past there's been a lot of pushback when there were other types of artifacts and things being added. So we, what we didn't want to do is come in like bull in a China shop with this. So I think that that kind of lines up though, because I, we did want to try to keep it simple here. Like you said, config layer and then the, the, the main layers with the media type. Cool. Um, other questions or comments? Should we go through the goals? I think we've kind of touched on some of these in some capacity. Cool. Um, so <laughs> a single uh, artifact type that should be able to run across runtimes in WASI. I think we generally have agreement. We don't know exactly what that looks like right now, maybe. Um, does that sound about right? Um, I put just making sure that this could fall back um, via the config media type. Uh, just there were some concerns around that. Uh, so I put that in there. Just make sure that it works today or at least in 1.1 spec that is eminent, eminently coming out. Um, I think the, you can find better support for the config media type than you are for artifact type. Okay. And so just, just keeping that as a heads up, I think it was um, ECR just recently flip the switch so that they allowed that new field to show up, but there may be other registries that if you try to push that field, it will reject it. The flip side of that is that the config media type is also checked by some registries. And if they see a value in there, they don't recognize specific registries may reject that as well. So we got both challenges there. Uh, and I think, Lynn, this is kind of what you were talking about um, was whether we want like a single layer type or um, multiple different types of layer media types. Um, I I think I, I, I was initially thinking that this would be a single layer type because a component kind of encapsulates everything. Um, it can be um, a whole bunch of different things, including like using like um, static files through like WASI or, um, and things like that. Um, but I guess it's up, up for debate, but keeping it simple, maybe that's what we initially drive towards. And then if we identify use cases for needing things different, then we can go from there. Um, and then we, we touch upon this as well, but the, I, I don't know exactly what it would be called, but the exploded representation of the component. So you would have multiple layers and then um, that could be represented in the OCI art artifact. And then when the uh, runtime, whether that's a WASM runtime or a container runtime, they could take those and compose them together, which doesn't mean that we need to be able to include some information on how that comes together, uh, which is the part that um, I, I don't know exactly how to, to, how to do that. So, um, my original... I want to just add some flavor there for you, James. My original thinking here when we do an exploded view is um, as soon as it becomes official, like Peter Hewn's wax stuff that he's been doing, the superset of wit that does kind of de describes the composition could be the way that, because it can be included just like the wit is kind of like embedded inside um, could be the way to do this. But that's why I was thinking like, if we can get this all behind what, what James was mentioning around the whole single if we can get it all behind a single artifact type, then and, and then let the like and then maybe have some conventions around it, it'll be easier to extend it in the future with the like, hey, here's the exploded view. Um, and here's all the different things, like, and here's like the things you need to be able to do for an exploded view. That was my thinking, is then it can be a step that step by step process. But um I I I think we should do the like crawl run crawl walk run here and then like maybe get to that walking stage and then see like okay now we know what we might need to do to get the 
the exploded representation. Basically, we don't want to... Uh, and James, I'm not sure if you still feel this way or not from when we originally talked, but like I think like the exploded thing is a good... We, we should get there, but like we want to at least enable these first use cases and then be able to still like not paint ourselves into a corner so that we couldn't add that next to to be able to do these like exploded views. And just a little bit of context on that, the component model spec actually provides a mechanism for internally referring to content addressed dependencies. So we sort of have that mechanism already baked in to the component model. Uh, the thing that would be missing from that, from just uh, from just dumping all of them in as layers, is choosing one of the layers as an entry point. I think would be the only the only part there. Um, have you guys given any thought on uh, the different import syntaxes uh, the, and what you want to support or how you want those things to behave uh, publishing to the OCI? Oh, I have not. Maybe expand upon that a little bit. So um, in the component model, um, the there's a uh, merged in the spec was a uh, a few different ways of doing imports of other components so that they're not necessarily in lines, but you could have a registry ID or uh, a digest um, or um, a URL. Um, and as part of like a registry policy or different ways of resolving these uh, imports, um, have you guys given any consideration around what you want to support there or deny or how you want to handle that. Calvin, are you referring to like the, the WAC import stuff that, that Peter was working on, or is this the import inside of something else? I'm just making sure I understand which direction this is coming from. Yeah. D Danny, you want to chime in too or and land um the so yeah. Yeah, like... I think I think this might based on what's already in this document, I think it might be a little bit out of scope. Uh, okay. inter-component dependencies, like build time dependencies. I think we're mostly focusing on shipping complete things uh, in this scope, it seems. So there would be locked, in the terminology that we've been using, I believe these would be locked components where the uh, they've already been resolved to the digest or they're bundled, so they have it inlined. I would just frame it as uh, resolving unlocked dependencies would be out of scope for this specification. I, okay. It is the sense I'm getting. Uh, I think Brandon's hand was up. I was going to ask Taylor, do you have something on this topic or follow up here? Because otherwise I'm going to circle back to another one. Yeah, I will. So, yeah, thanks for asking. I'll do that real quick. So um, the way the way I was thinking of this, Calvin, when, when I was doing it, I, and people can let me know if they disagree here, but I wanted to make sure that like what we do here, and it's, I think it's also makes it simpler to make sure OCI upstream will be okay with all this is we just want to give enough info to run times that they can make a smart decision with what they want to do. Um, that's what we care about. And so like, if they want to import things certain ways or satisfy certain dependencies, we want that on the runtime more than rather than being on the registry and the registry just provides the necessary details for things to make smart decisions. That's the kind of thinking that I was going through when I when I was when I was kind of originally brainstorming this, and then James reached out and he seemed to be kind of in that same boat of like, here's the things we can use and that are available that we give to these runtimes, um, and then that, I think that gets us in a in a good a simple but also fairly robust thing because then we all have the same standard features we can leverage to make the decisions within our code about how we're using the artifacts we pull down. Yeah, I think I'm dovetailing a little bit into that, which was, there was a question that was asked a second ago of how do you pick an entry layer? And I'll give you four different options that I've seen out there and just let you know that those all exist and I'm not saying you have to pick one over another. One is you can order the layers and we see that in OCI today, you order the layered file systems and one goes on top of the other on top of the other. And so that order is important. If you want order to be important, then you want to pick that soon and put that into your spec early on because otherwise people won't know to treat order as important or they will. and which direction you go there is important to sort out. Um, you can also put this in your config, 
in your config content. And so in there, you can have, okay, here are all our external layers here we're picking from. Here's the important one to start with. And so some kind of extra data in that JSON, the config can be in there. You can pick other media types. And so you can have layers of two different media types. And so one would be the root media type and the other will be, here's some kind of external content component thing media type. And so that would be treated differently by the runtimes. And lastly, you can put data and annotations on each of those layers. And so you can have a layer show up and an extra annotation under it saying, hey, this layer is for X, just so you know, you can use it. So four options, not picking and choosing, just letting you know they all exist. Yeah, the implicit in ordering is a little bit appealing to me because we do have a natural ordering of dependencies, but while well, a partial ordering, I guess it's a graph, it's a, a DAG. Um, but I, I don't really feel strongly about which of those approaches we take. It, it is something I think we need to have some answer for before we allow multiple layers in a artifact. I guess the one advantage of the ordering is you don't have to decide ahead of time. You can just wait until you actually need multiple layers and then make the decision. I mean, I, I kind of like that as well because um, there, there's always, because you always have in component land, you always have that top level like eventual world, like here's what I can call, you know, here's the functions I'm going to call in. And so like, if we can have that just be the last one in the list or the first one in the list, whatever ordering we do, I think that does give us a lot more flexibility. Um, it basically would be the entry point into said graph if it has to be reassembled in the eventual exploded view. And so I think that's, uh, to me, that sounds the simplest. So um, maybe we should, I think we should probably all do some thinking about that and then come back at the next meeting and be like, yeah, we, we've decided we're going to do like have the discussion and then decide. Um, does that sound like, I think that'd be a good, a good way to do it. Does that sound like a, a good plan to people? That sounds fine to me. And just one more point on that. I think it's the kind of thing that you can punt because you can always specify in the config. If an entry point isn't given, then it is the last layer, right? You can, you can do something like that retroactively and it'll still work. Any other goals that we should have, or maybe non-goals? Uh, um, coming back to the single layer type, uh, spin will not be able to do that in the near term um, because we don't have a mechanism for bundling metadata about an app into a component. Well, I shouldn't say that it, it can't. Either, either the layer type has to allow for some flexibility or spin will not be able to use it directly. Yeah, I, I think I think I, this, this came from work when I was playing with spin. Um, there were so many different layer types and I figured if spin had a bunch of layer types, I think cloud might have a bunch of layer types and then some other runtime might have a bunch of layer types. And then we get into this place where those aren't really usable across the various runtimes. And so that's why having a finite version of what these things look like um, was kind of the goal. Um, and I was going for one, but maybe maybe there's maybe there's more than one that makes sense, but, um, but that's where that's coming from. Um, I was thinking about this too, Lan. I, I think that what I would like to try, because like James said, like I think we use two different custom media types for for providers and actors inside of Wasm Cloud. And so I I think we could make it work behind a single type and then maybe leverage the the annotations for um for noting like if it's a config or like metadata about the application. Um because I I actually consider like annotations actually feels like a really good place for that. The more I'm thinking about it, because then like there's still pieces of components that like someone who's building an application um, and they're running it in spin, and then someone who's building it and running it and run Wasi, and then like in Wasm Cloud, they could be using some of like the same base layers of components and then pull from those kind of like have those kind of things available and see them like be able to share those. But then like the annotation type is around for like when 
when someone sees that, oh, this is a config, this is a metadata thing. And if I don't know what that is, I can I can ignore it. But some but a, a runtime that does know what that is can can use it. It feels like a nice optional, but I'd I'd probably want to like see what that would look like in practice. Like if we created an example manifest and and then say, oh yeah, that's great, or no, that's really dumb. Um but it, it seems like that could be a, a nice flexible way of doing it because there are multiple runtimes that require that kind of metadata thing. And then there's other runtimes that don't. And so if we can have a way that supports both of those and allows for the kind of the reuse or the sharing, that would be really, I think, useful still. Um, so I guess we're about 40 minutes in, um, the, <clears throat> excuse me. so this is kind of the initially proposed manifest and it, it by no means is the final representation. It was just the way to get something out there so people could give comments. Uh, and I did get quite a few comments here. Um, the. I think the, the key things here are would be the, the artifact type in the name, the naming schema, and then um, the, con the config media type, which is also going to be um, the same as the artifact type for the backwards compatibility that uh, Brandon was talking about earlier. Uh, and then the, the final part would be these layers um, down here. Um, and so, um, you, you can kind of ignore the sizes and the digest. I just put those in to make it look like something was real. Uh, so I think we need to come up with kind of kind of the naming, um, and uh, and then we also need to think about what this config looks like. And so down down here, um, I did kind of explode a config um, and put some information in there around what, what it might look like. But we can talk about that second secondarily. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, Lynn. Uh, this is a very specific point and not one that I personally feel strongly about, but I have received feedback in the past that there may be disadvantages to putting Bytecode Alliance, the brand name, into standards, uh, both sort of organizational with tying it to this particular industry group and uh, sort of political. <laughs> uh, it's just something to keep in mind that there are some feelings about seeing Bytecode Alliance in specs. Um, yeah, again, not something I personally feel strongly about, but maybe something to validate early with a broader group um, on that specific point. Sure, yeah, I don't, I don't have strong opinions on what we call it. Um, I, I don't know what uh, organization we would put it behind because uh, we're all mixed in various places. And so, um, I, and I think if I read the, the doc, right, you're supposed to put it like VND put behind a, um, an organization of some type. Is that right, right? In, right there. That's all within the IETF and so, you can register it directly with them, and that goes in that certain format there. Not the CNCF, IETF. Um, that's the standards body out there, I believe. Yeah, sorry, I meant CNCF could potentially be the vendor. Oh, um, maybe. But either way, whatever name you pick, um, it will be good to register it with them, not required, but it is nice if you do that. Are there any advantages or disadvantages of sort of registering? You're more likely to show up in standard libraries that pull from the standards. That's that's the main thing. All right. So uh, naming is something that we need to figure out. Um, the 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 layer type can be different. Uh, Lynn, you had suggested application.wasm because um, it's the IETF media type or the um, 
Ayana type. So I pulled that, I, I found it, there's a WASM one. I wasn't sure um, if we wanted to reuse WASM or if we wanted to like potentially have WASI. I, I, that's something I wasn't sure about um, just because WASM has particular semantics and I wasn't sure if we can use something that's registered already. Um, so. Yeah, so I have a, a quick spiel on this. Uh, from a technical perspective, if the layer contains a WASM binary, then I think it is appropriate to use application WASM. That includes components. Components are a proposed extension to WASM that if and when accepted would make them WASM, right? So I think it's technically appropriate. Uh, okay, that's one point. Uh, second point is, and this gets into actually the browser question, uh, Streaming compilation only works if a server returns the media type application WASM. I don't know if that's at all relevant here, but just something to know that there is like this one technical use case where the media type has to be application WASM uh, in order to use this feature. Um, again, you would have to be streaming directly from the OCI server and the OCI server would have to set the content type to the layer type. I don't know if either of those are things that happen, but something to consider. Um, the other point is, if you did want to be able to differentiate between components and modules or any other parameterization, you if you used application WASM, we should probably go update the spec, the uh, sorry, the registration to allow for parameterization. Technically, that is something you are supposed to do if you update, if you add, if you want to allow parameters in an IETF registered media type, you should go say that we allow parameters in these particular parameters. Um, yeah, so required parameters being NA, optional parameters being NA, that doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. It means you can't use them at all. I looked this up. Uh, that's all I've got. Again, it's not something I feel super strongly about. The browser use case is one very specific technical point. And then just sort of like philosophically, if the thing is a WASM blob, it kind of makes sense to use application WASM, but there are also a few reasons to not do it this way. I think that's that's pretty much all I have to say on that topic. Hey James, um, uh, just offering a maybe suggestion here and see what you think. I think we I've been just gathering these and putting them into follow ups. I think we kind of like just keep going, stepping through stuff, gathering these in the follow-ups, then we'll use them. We'll basically burn down the list as we come into our next meetings to to make decisions on them. Does that sound like a good suggestion? Okay. Okay, uh, should go to config, config media type in. Uh, so this, for, for an artifact, uh, this can be basically whatever we want. Um, and the, it could be blank. It could be just a blank artifact, uh, blank set of JSON. That means we don't have anything. I think a lot of artifacts use that uh, because they don't have information. It's just kind of a storage space. Uh, and Or we can put as much information in here as we want. So this is potentially where we could put like, things like the entry point. Um, we could put any WASI specific uh, information that we need in here. Um, I was thinking that there would we we'd want to follow something along the same lines as like architecture and OS. Um, and then maybe something around WASI, uh, and then a, an optional subset of the config that would tell runtimes things that they need to know. Um, there were there were quite a few comments in here around um, and Taylor, maybe you can expand here, but it was just around like, do we need to put any config in here at all? If we can just keep this as bare minimal as possible, that makes it more usable across uh, and, and long-term uh, supportable. So. Yeah, I, I'm curious what other people think here, especially those who have lots of experience in WASM as well. But like, I was, I was considering most of this stuff is like, WASM itself and then components on top of that are fairly self-describing formats. So I didn't think we need to put anything that's like WASI specific or any sort of like WASM specific config in this section, though I did totally think we would need like a config section as, as kind of described here. But I'm curious if people are, have other things they thought of or run into that could need its own like dedicated section for this. 
and if people do i think we put that on the agenda and, and we can cover like deep into it but i i i also could have been like way off in thinking that we didn't need anything no i, I think um luke had said the same thing here um he said something very similar to what you said i mean if luke says it it's probably the <laughs> the right answer there so okay All right, um, you can think on this and then we'll cover off a couple last things and we'll close up the meeting. Um, I think we, we had a few open questions. Um, do we, is there any desire to like compress the files in any capacity? Um, how do we compose the various, oh, we kind of talked about this, the root component. So that's the uh, entry point that we discussed earlier. Um, how does it fit into an OCI index? Um, this in particular, since um, th there was a comment in somewhere in the OCI registry around whether or not you can stick OCI artifacts alongside the same, uh, alongside like standard images um, in the um, in the same index. There's some concerns about that, um, and then. Uh, well, so this isn't really applicable anymore since we're going to have our own, um, our own config. And then how do we best facilitate interrupt? And I think we've got all the right people here. So, um, I think we're in that, we're having those conversations. Uh, and then the, the one last thing I wanted to mention was you know, when, when I, whenever I've been talking about this with people, they ask, how are you going to put a like static file or a runtime configuration? And the runtime configuration, there's a WASI spec that Taylor's been working on uh, that would, um, you could essentially package it up as a component and load, load that in as the runtime. And then for static files, the suggestion was to use things like the, vert, the uh, WASI vert uh, so that you can put those behind there. Or you could write your own custom component that did whatever specific type of thing you need to do, but needs to fall back to picking it up from a storage account or something like that. Um, so, so that's that's everything there. Um, go ahead, Glenn. Did you have something? I just had a specific comment on the static file virtual file system. Uh, it is sometimes usable and sometimes not today. In the future, it should always be usable, but we are not quite there yet. Uh, so it might not be a completely general solution yet. Yeah, I think I think this is, you know, by the time this gets implemented across the runtime of things, I think uh, we have some time. So, uh, we well, as in, it's not fully usable in preview two and won't be until the next thing. Okay. Uh, there are fundamental reasons that you can't you can't. You can't compose it in certain ways with other things and still like without having to copy data four times between memories. Like there's some fundamental technical problems with it still. Cool. Uh, so we covered a lot of stuff. Uh, thank you for taking notes. And I guess we'll just next week we'll start or next meeting we'll start burning down the various topics that came up. Do you have anything they want to add? Uh, just a question. Uh, for the non-runnable uh, WASM uh, component, uh, does it make the authentication authorization need different from the traditional containers? For the container registry, the authentication doesn't care what content you're pulling. It's it's all going through the same path. Yeah, I don't I don't think. I don't know that it would necessarily make any difference. It's sort of the equivalent of running a private package registry for any language ecosystem. I think it's, I don't know what I need to distinguish there. So as long as it's run uh, within the container image, it doesn't make a difference. As long as you have full access to that repository, you can typically pull any content in that repository. Okay. Doesn't matter what the Thanks. content is. Is there any URL on what is a current 
container, container. What is the plus indication of the authorization mechanism? That is in work. We actually got our working group coming up in one hour from now, and that work is going very slow. The standard most people work from is the Docker spec that was defined long ago when they originally created the registry, and that's what most people have worked off of. And so it is a basic and a kind of a takeoff of OpenID, OIDC, um, kind of an extension on top of that. Between those two different authentication types, that's what registries tend to support. So of course, it's also fairly common to just dump a random token into your password and do whatever you want on the back end. That's so the password gets injected as the password, and then on the back end, the authentication server is doing OIDC as your login there, and then you get a token back from that. Thanks. Um, James and then everyone else, I think I was just looking at the notes and kind of synthesizing everything and also pulling in Calvin's question. I think um, I'd like to suggest for our next agenda, we cover um, the entry point and the like that the top level layer thing and kind of like work it out as like an example manifest. I'd really like to put it together as an example manifest and then build the spec from the example manifest that we want to to define, like how we want to extend this. And so I think we start with maybe that top level talk about like, we need to talk about determining entry point um, and then like the name of the the like artifact layers. And I also think we can set like timelines next time. Like when do we want to get this done by? How do we want to get it all? Like what, like when do we get it all delivered? Um, and then we can spec out the rest of it from there. Does that sound like a good next step? Um, so entry points, the top level like manifests, like names and definitions, and then deliverable timeline next week. Does that sound okay? I feel like you're naming all the hard problems in computer science with naming things and really schedules. <laughs> we just need an, an off by one something or another or some cache invalidation and then we're all set. Um... Uh, Brandon, I have a specific question for you. What's the how's what's the best way to stay up to date with the latest guidance for artifacts, preferably without joining yet another working group? <laughs> the guidance for artifacts um, is relatively done. Um, the The one that's going back and forth right now is probably the open issue that I think has been linked to a couple times in here over on image spec where they're trying to decide a little bit in there. And the biggest challenge isn't so much artifacts as three furs and trying to get that out. And I think we're close to done with that. So artifacts in general, you're following all the correct policies here. So there's, uh, I don't think there's anything for you to worry about in what you're doing here for artifacts. Great, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. I think All right. two weeks from now, same channel. Yes. Yep. And we should have an official invite by next time if the service desk gets around to it. Um, so we right now we'll still we'll still be meeting here, but we'll have an actual thing you can add to your calendar overlay by, instead of manually. So uh, I'll try to post when, when we know or if Ricardo might post too if he's if he's figured it out. So All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.